welcome, welcome. I'm Dee, and this is the Unguided Life, where I am taking it one day at a time, bring guys along for the journey to hold me accountable as I budget my way through life. Can you believe it? It is already October. We are already approaching the fourth quarter. It's fall, y'all. Fall is my favorite favorite time of the year i get like so excited i don't know what it is about fall and the last quarter that causes me to just be a little bit nicer <laughs> but what we need to do we need to create our roadmap for october we need to have a guide for our money throughout the month so we won't run into any issues when it comes to breaking down the income that we receive let me go ahead and get everything set up and we'll get straight to that. Okay, we are back. Yes, so I have everything set up for my monthly budget pre-plan. So just so you understand my process is the first thing I do is I'm always indicating when I get paid in my calendar and I use the Gooseby plan. Gooseby Twins Planner at this present time. I don't know why I was getting tongue-tied, but it was at this present time. And I usually just indicate when I'm getting paid. And then as the bills start flowing in, I have a piece of paper. I write down all the bills as they're coming in. And then I transfer that information onto my calendar. And then basically I can tell when I need to start my budget and when I need to end my budget. I like to start my budget when i get paid so regardless if it's a monthly budget pre-plan or it's the actual income breakdown it's going to start when i get paid and at the most what i should say my main income which is my employer which i get paid by weekly so it's it kind of works out that way okay what i do is i after i do that it's really time to put the pen to the paper situation because what I want to actually do is I want to create a roadmap for my money. I want my money to know what to do when it comes in. So I created this monthly budget overview sheet. This sheet like breaks everything down by category. And it's very important that I break everything down by categories because it kind of tells me where my money is really going. And you know what I'm saying? It really tells a story about my money. And when I'm able to see the percentages, I'm really able to tell what's working and what's not and try to make those adjustments the best way I can. But in order to fill out this sheet, I have to know what goes on this sheet. And this is my monthly budget overview detail. Now, I loved to tell my money what to do, but I wanted to have an end game. And how I, you know, do that is creating monthly goals. I usually don't do the monthly goals until after my budget ends because I can kind of tell what I really need to do to be successful the following month. But this is where I start. This is where this information is being detailed before the budget starts. Then my income, I can get income from any source. So with that being said, I want to show it. Then I take that same information that I got from my calendar, I put here. So, because I really need to know exactly when things are due, what is due and how much it is. And when it's completed, I need to check it off to make sure it's happening. Okay. There is nothing worse than forgetting a bill and then have to pay a gazillion million dollars in fees for them to take it now some places leniency and some is like nah but with that being said there is a section of here which breaks down the discretionary income that's not filled out because the only way for us to determine this information is to do our budget pre-plan this budget pre-plan i've stated before where it's from Kiambra Vaughn at kiambravon.com. I love this budget pre-plan because it breaks my income down as it comes in, okay? What I'm expecting for it to come in and what I'm expecting to go out. Now, for my budget, my October budget starts September 24th to October 21st. And that's why I love undated planners because my 
budget does not follow the traditional calendar. So I like to have that flexibility to be able to put the dates that I want it to be, regardless if it doesn't follow the traditional calendar. Now I break my income down um, each time it comes in. Now, I may not show it each time on camera, um, mainly because I get a small stipend and that stipend sometimes falls on the day that I get paid and sometimes it doesn't. So I just choose not to show that online because it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. So at this present time, I also decided that I no longer will be including anything in my income um, that like is extra. So let's go back here because we can fill this out. It sold $3,344.14. I'm not pulling anything from savings. I'm not including rollover and I'm not including bonuses. So $3,344.14 is what I'm planning on budgeting for the month. Okay. So what that looks like. So that includes only getting paid twice because it's not a magic month for my employer and then the stipend. So the first date is 924 and I'm expected to receive my first paycheck, which is 1600. So we'll just put that there. So I have that. Now I need to pay everything from the first day I get paid into the next day I get paid. So the next day I get paid is October 1st, okay? So the bills that falls in there, and that's why it's important to have this close, is STARS, credit card number two, the internet, credit card number three, and given. And I'm gonna give y'all a quick pause. Now, let me tell y'all how I panicked because I was like, can I live off of my low income without any side income without pulling from say, sinking funds or savings because when I was crunching the numbers, because I do a, like a pre-plan on a different sheet, it was like I was in the negative and I was like, oh my goodness. So I went into panic mode. What can I cut? Who not going to survive October? And it was looking like it was going to be Hulu because I wanted to add Hulu because I'm following these shows. And when you hooked on a show, it's kind of hard, especially when you're a homebody. That's your entertainment. So when I was like, I got to go Hulu, then I was like, so I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Papa in school, can I get his discount? What's this discount of clue? Like I'm all over the place looking for ways to cut. Then I was like, after looking for ways to cut, I'm like, I still got enough, Lord, 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 what to do? And I thought I heard the Lord say, go apply for a part-time job. <laughs> so that's what I did. I applied for a part-time job. I interviewed for a part-time job. I re received an offer for a part-time job, but I rescinded the offer for a part-time job. And it was not because I didn't need it. It was because I didn't like the practice of what happened when I, you know, the interviewing, the position. So just to give you a high level overview, what it was is I applied for these part-time retail positions. When I went to interview, the person interviewing me was interviewing me for her team on a diff, for a different position. And... First, and she was trying to first, and then I was like, that's not what I, like after the interview and she was offering, she slid this paper to me. I was like, that's not what I um, signed up for. And she's like, it wasn't? Like she was surprised y'all. Okay, whatever. And so um, she was like, well, what's the position? So right off that, I can remember the actual titles. So I knew the areas. And so she called to the human resource lead and the lady was like, well, that position requires full time, which it did not because it was a part time. And I'll let y'all know in another video why I knew that this part, it was a part time position. The other two, she was like, well, if you do this position, they, they are in the end do this. So this is where you want to start. Mm -mm, that's what you want somebody to go. And it didn't sit well on my heart that night and I said you know what I'm that morning I'm going to rescind the offer so I went to call but it was no answer and then 
I was like, maybe I don't need to rescind the offer. And then the Lord is like, yes, you do. And he spoke through my pastor, through his sermon. And needless to say, I won't be working for them at this present time. So now let's go ahead and get into this. <laughs> now that I told you all about that. So all I'm doing is I'm going to minus all of the expenses one at a time. Because I always say, T, don't make these videos long. I already messed up. But I do. It always happens. Because I like to tell a story. Like I like to talk to people and get them, give them as much information to know about me. So now we're done with that. And the $810.60 that is remaining, it stays there because it has to be carried over because not all bills of this pay period has been completed. So we carry that over to October 1st. That's the next time we get paid. And the amount that we get paid is the $144 for my stipend. And so I just add the $144.14. So I'm going to be working with $954.74. Okay. And then we just do the same thing. We just minus the expenses, which is just going to be the rent. And of course, giving. I do not send anything planned out of my envelope system, nor do I send anything planned out of my sinking funds. So this remaining, again, I don't do anything with it because it needs to carry over because bills still need to be paid. So we're going to just put that to the side. And then the next time I actually get paid is on the 8th. And that's from regular from my job. So we're going to... Add that so that's what I'll be working with $1,825.33. Of course, I'm gonna speed this up because this is the bulk of the bills that needs to be paid for the month. Now, the only thing to notate this particular month um, is that I did decrease on star, which is no sense of that. Hulu made the cut, my electric was decreased, my water went up, but I I think there's a running toilet, so I'm going to rectify that this weekend. And yeah, so I think that's the only thing I need to discuss. Now, I know for the first income breakdown, I'll go back to it so we can see it. The credit card number two was high, and that's because I'm paying off something um, that is due in December. I want to get it out the way, and then I made a purchase that's less than 0%, so we need to get that out the way as well because we don't want no interest on our credit cards. So let me go ahead and get all this capital. All right, we're all done. So then I go over here to this area because I want to see what I'm carrying over each paycheck. And the first one was $810.60. Of course, we carried that over. After carrying that over, the remainder was $225.33. Of course, we carry that over and the remaining actually was $169.84. So I know my goal is to save as much as I can to go towards my emergency fund, my three months emergency fund goal. So I'm going to send $160. And then it's going to leave the $9.84 as the buffer. Okay, so now we've completed the budget pre-plan here, we then can go back to here and fill this out. Okay, so we now need to fill out this information. So for the envelope system, the first breakdown we're doing 240, and then the second one we're doing 260, so that's $500. For sinking funds, it's 195, the two breakdowns, so that's 390. For savings, it's 160, nothing extra to debt. $9.84 is going to the buffer. So we already know $3,344.14. Okay, when I wrote this down, I noticed that this may have been incorrect, so I paused. 
just to double check and it was so i corrected that so my expense is two thousand two hundred eighty four dollars and thirty cents what happened was it was 31 cent because for some reason i thought this was nine dollars and 63 cent when i first started doing my budget pre-plan and so i didn't go back in and update this amount because this is not this is calculated by hand not by these like a spreadsheet or anything so that was all my math so let's just go ahead and add that to make and then we're going to add everything else because we want to make sure every dollar is accounted for okay there we go for our budget so I always start with a zero base budget. I always end with a zero base budget. I want to know where my money is going. I and I want it to have a place. Everything to have a place. I don't want no money lingering out there for no odd reason. So now that we completed this, we can now move on to this. And this is the budget overview. So we're gonna go ahead and put in three thousand. 300 and I try to find my other markers so and I know these are going out or they're they're light so my apologies so that's why I'm trying to say everything is clearly so you can hear it hopefully so three thousand three hundred forty four dollars and fourteen cent is the income because we're only going to be accounted for what I'll be receiving in a paycheck nothing else will be accounted for okay so for giving we have given and I said I was gonna you know what I'm actually going to use a marker hope I don't make any mistakes <laughs> so for giving it's going to be three hundred and thirty four dollars and forty one cent for savings and this is going to be a hundred and sixty dollars for housing housing is going to equal nine hundred eighteen dollars and thirty is it 37 or 87 let's see we have rent we have water we have electricity what else are we missing uh cable and internet okay 87 see it don't hard to double check for the insurance which is the insurance includes the Renters, Life, OnStar, Auto, and Value Personal Property. The only items we have for the insurance is the auto, which is um, the 282.51, and then the OnStar. And then, uh, what else do we have? Life insurance. So that's $337.00. Four cent for lifestyle. Now lifestyle has beefed up. We have our <laughs> storage. Of course, we have uh, the streaming services. So with the streaming services we have our Netflix. We have Hulu now. We have Stars, and uh, lifestyle is the phone. So that's $215.76 for lifestyle, $215.76 for debt. Debt includes car, any miscellaneous, and our credit card. So our car is $280.14. Now we have touch, we have balances on all three cards. Car number one balance is $57.26. Car number two is $133.75. And car Oh, it's car, I did I say car number two. That was car number two. Car number three is seven dollars and seven cent. So that's four hundred and seventy-eight dollars and twenty-two cent for our envelope system. And we are using this here. It tells us that for our envelope system, it's going to be five hundred. Now for our sinking funds, it includes the sinking fund category of three ninety plus the nine dollars and eighty-four cent. Yeah, let's get that right. <laughs> $9.84 for our sinking fund. So that's $399.84. And I guess I could use that for all of it. My bad. You know, sometimes pl great plans just happen. It, it's <laughs> so let's write down the income. And then we're just going to add everything. We're just going to make sure that that equals the same amount. 
because that's how we know our calculations is right across the board. And it is. So $3,344.14. And that is zero. So all our money is accounted for and budgeted for the month. And I'm excited about that. So if you have any questions, definitely leave them below. It was my pleasure of breaking down how I set up my monthly budget income. It looks weird. So I'm definitely going to go back with this after I erase that. But as stated, I'm sorry, <laughs> go ahead and leave your comments below. Any suggestions? Um, The month of October will be some new debt coming into play. So I did ask a question on my debt video about how I should show that because it's going to inflate how much it is because I never accounted for it in the beginning of the year. Should I just like continue on only showing what's going to be paid on until next year and then start it all over? Or should I just include it and keep explaining why I'm not totaling that balance into the debt that I'm paying off? I don't know if that makes any sense, but just leave a comment below. Peace out.